there. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the grassy plateaus. Anyway, so just get right into it. This place actually has two life pods instead of one. Let's go over life pod six first. There were two people that were unnamed. One was intelligent, the other was dumb. They were both female. There was a bunch of radiation around them. The smart one said they should get radiation suits so they should look for lead. Yet the dumb person didn't help with that. So the smart person had to go out on her own. Their second log is when the smart passed passenger comes back. Apparently, the dummy used a flare, thinking it was a distress flare, which, um, how would that even work in the life pod? No one's gonna see it through the life pod. And then the smart person obviously says to not wave it around, and that'll catch the fuel line. Can you guess what happened next? It catched the fuel line and it exploded. Yeah, this has to be one of the dumbest deaths in Subnautica. We also have Life Pod 17. Life Pod 17 belongs to a guy named Ozzy who run the cafe in the Aurora. When you find his Life Pod, you can find a sea moth near it, by the way. Or at least a sea moth fragment. Ozzy's Life Pod got the sea moth bay thrown over his Life Pod. That's why the sea moth is there. So that's obviously gonna be bad for them. But unlike Life Pod 6, they landed near the jelly shroom caves and the crab snake started attacking the life pod. Ozzy was very scared, as he says in his log. He keeps on seeing shadows. In my opinion, his last bit of dialogue is very sad. The Aurora was carrying everything needed to build a phase gate. Mobile, vehicle, vase, bioreactors, propulsion cannons. It had a cinema. There was a zero-g gym. My cafe! I don't understand how we're here now. I don't know why no one's coming from me. And that was the last we ever heard of Ozzy. He seems to be having a mental crisis, which is very appropriate, considering he's stuck on an alien planet and doesn't know what to do. He just owned a cafe on the Aurora. He doesn't have any survival skills. And what we can presume happened to Ozzy was the crab snake finally broke into his life pod. It then dragged him back to the jelly shroom caves, ultimately eating him. As far as resources go in this biome, you'll find sandstone and limestone now crops mostly sandstone. You'll find salt and quartz here as well. Let's start off with the plants in this bio. In the coral section, you can find the coral shell plate, which is a filter feeder. In this biome, you can find drooping stingers in the deeper parts of it. Furled papyrus, rough cradle and redwort, tiger plants, viand nettles and violet bayou. Finally, the rifing reed. You can find two carnivores here. The biter, which resembles an anglerfish. They have a specialized antenna, a second pair of eyes and overdeveloped tail fins. And the apex predator of this biome, the sand shark. The sand shark is an ambush predator on planet 4546b. It waits in the sand ready to pounce at its prey, kind of like a stargazer fish. The difference between them, besides, you know, looks, is that sand sharks pop out of the ground and do a little maneuver. This helps confuse their prey, which leads to an even more successful hunt. They are probably related to blighters and biters, as they all come from the same ancestor, Feta. I'll get into Feta more in the Lost River video, but all you need to know is that Feta is extinct and these are its descendants. You can tell this from a lot of reasons, but mostly the four eyes, which sand sharks also have. The PDA says it kind of has two legs, but they're not actual legs because that would be cursed. They are used to bury themselves in the sand. They have a front-facing dorsal fin and a segmented exoskeleton. And since this biome is full of sand and places to hide, it's easy to think why this place would be the perfect home for sand sharks. You can find boomerangs, peepers, spadefish, hoopfish, and and Reginald fish here. You can only find one Leviathan class here and that's the Reefback Leviathan, which I may make another video about because Reefbacks and Vent Gardens both have ecosystems. So I may do a special video on them. Maybe just a tiny special before the Lost River. There are four grassy plateaus on the map. This is gonna be a long one to read off. Remember these numbers and where they are so I can tell you where each grassy plateau is. The first grassy plateau is next to the safe shallows, the kelp forest, the spot Reef, the Dewans, the Blood Kelp Trench, and a tiny bit of the Grand Reef. Two is next to the Kelp Forest, the Mushroom Forest, and the Underwater Islands, along with a tiny bit of the Safe Shallows. Number three, take number two. And instead of the Underwater Islands, it verges on the Crash Zone. And number four is next to, of course, the Kelp Forest, the Crash Zone, the Craig Field, and the Safe Shallows. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Wow, we're nearly at the end of the series. That's cool. Oh, by the way, a couple things I forgot. Number one, you can find sand shark eggs here. 
Not a surprise. Number two, you can also find brain coral here. Alright, I'm gonna see you later. Okay, peace.